If you've ever seen the schematic of a flyback converter, then you may be familiar with this group of components right here referred to as an RCD snubber. The RCD snubber is extremely important for the protection and operation of the flyback converter. However, there aren't a ton of great resources online that show you how to determine the appropriate values for these components. So in today's video, we are going to do a deep dive on the RCD snubber, including a step-by-step -step example of how to design one on your own. But real quick, before we go any further, feel free to check out the links in the description. You may find them helpful. And now let's get right into it. So first, let's give a little background on the RCD snubber. The RCD snubber gets its name from the fact that the circuit is made up of a resistor, a capacitor, and a diode. Wired up in this configuration where the anode of the diode is connected to the drain pin of the MOSFET, and then the snubber resistor and capacitor are connected in parallel to the input bulk voltage. The main purpose of the RCD snubber is to protect the primary side MOSFET during the operation of the converter and prevent any large voltage spikes from occurring while the FET is switching. The RCD snubber also has the additional benefit of improving the EMI performance of the flyback converter. So if you have designed snubbers for other types of power supplies, then you will see some crossover in the design approach for the RCD snubber. So to understand how the RCD snubber works, we first need to talk about the problems that it is solving. As I previously mentioned, one of the functions of the RCD snubber is to protect the MOSFET from any large voltage spikes. To understand where those large voltage spikes may be coming from, we need to take a closer look at the power stage of the flyback converter. As you may know, the power stage of the flyback converter is comprised of the input capacitor, the primary side of the transformer, and the MOSFET. This circuit diagram shows a schematic of the power stage with the addition of a few components known as parasitic elements. These additional elements are inherent in some of our power stage components, and they arise from non-ideal characteristics of the components themselves. The first parasitic element comes from the transformer, and it is labeled with the L-leak designator. This parasitic element is known as the transformer's leakage inductance, and it is the portion of the primary side inductance that is not magnetically coupled to the secondary side. In real life, transformers can never actually attain perfect magnetic coupling efficiency between the primary side and the secondary side. So what happens is some of that inductance leaks and is represented on the schematic as a separate inductor that goes in series with the magnetizing inductance. The next parasitic element comes from the primary side MOSFET, and it is labeled with the COSS designator. This is known as the MOSFET's output capacitance, and it is represented as a capacitor that connects to the drain and source pins of the MOSFET. This capacitance is simply just a result of the MOSFET's physical design, and any wiring or material between the drain and source pins can add to the capacitance. So putting this all together, the leakage inductance and output capacitance form an LC resonant circuit that oscillates every time the MOSFET switches off. This in turn results in a huge voltage spike that can be seen across the MOSFET. And if this problem is not dealt with, it can lead to premature failure of our MOSFET due to overstressing the part. In addition to a very large voltage spike, the LC resonant circuit also causes some ringing at the primary switch node which can lead to some serious issues with the EMI performance of the flyback converter. And so one ancillary benefit of the RCD snubber is that it can also quell some of these EMI issues that happen as a result of the parasitic inductance and capacitance. So now that we know about the problems we are dealing with, let's talk about how the RCD snubber can be used to solve those problems. So here we have a simulation of the LC resonance circuit. And we can see a huge voltage spike does in fact occur on the MOSFET every time it switches off. Then by adding the RCD snubber, we can see that both the peak voltage as well as the oscillations are significantly reduced. Comparing the flyback with and without the RC snubber side by side, and you can really see the difference. So now that we understand how the RCD snubber solves our problems, Let's talk about how to determine the actual values for the RCD components. To determine the values, we will be using the equations from this application note titled 
Design guidelines for the RCD snubber of a flyback converter. I also highly recommend reading through this application note on your own if you want some additional information about how the RCD snubber works. Okay, so looking at the application note, the first component we will do calculations for is going to be the resistor. To determine the resistance value of the RCD snubber, we are going to use this equation right here where Vsn is the voltage across the snubber capacitor, which is usually 2 to 2.5 times N times Vo, where N is our transformer's winding ratio and Vo is the nominal output voltage of the flyback converter. L leak is our leakage inductance of the primary side of the transformer. Standard leakage inductance values are around 3% of your nominal primary side inductance. I peak is the peak current that is flowing through the primary side of the transformer. This value is usually determined when doing the power stage calculations for the flyback converter. We will go over that in a separate video. And then finally, FS is the switching frequency of the flyback converter. I have gone ahead and created an example spec sheet that contains values for each of these parameters to use as an example. Plugging them into our equation yields a snubber resistor value of 45.45 kilo ohms. The next thing we need to do is determine how much power the snubber resistor will dissipate. To do this, we can use this equation right here where Vsn is the voltage across our snubber capacitor, which is equivalent to the voltage across the snubber resistor, and Rsn, which is the snubber resistance value that we just calculated. Plugging those values into our equation gives us a total power dissipation of 0.495 watts. The next component we need to calculate is the capacitance value of the snubber capacitor. To do that, we will use this equation right here where delta Vsn is the snubber capacitor voltage ripple. Standard values for delta Vsn are about 5 to 10 percent of Vsn. Rsn is, of course, the snubber resistor value, and Fs is the switching frequency. Plugging those values into our equation, we get a snubber capacitance of 2 nanofarads. Another important parameter for the snubber capacitor is going to be its voltage rating. As we saw, the voltage across the snubber capacitor is around 150 volts in this example, so we need to make sure our capacitor can handle that. Typically, you will see film capacitors used for RCD snubbers because they can provide those high voltage ratings that we will require. And then the last component that we need to determine values for is the snubber diode. The first parameter that we need to specify for the snubber diode is its reverse breakdown voltage. Ideally, this value should be higher than our MOSFETs drain to source voltage rating. So it's not uncommon to see snubber diodes rated, you know, 650, 750, like even 800 volts. For the diode's current rating, usually one to two amps is sufficient for these applications. And the last important detail for our snubber diode is that it needs to be a fast recovery type with the recovery time being less than 500 nanoseconds. So while it is great that we have those equations to do some preliminary calculations, ultimately you're going to want to fine tune these values based on empirical data. So next we're going to talk about how you would do that. One important thing to keep in mind is that your snubber's performance can also vary based on the load. So you'll want to choose that value that load value specifically based on whatever your application is. And I wouldn't just blanket choose the maximum load that your flyback is rated for if that's not what your typical application load. But like I said, this can all be determined through testing. So the first thing I wanna talk about is reducing that peak voltage spike. If the peak voltage that you are seeing across your MOSFET is still too high after adding the RCD snubber, then one thing you can try is increasing the capacitance of the RCD snubber. One thing that is important to understand is the relationship of the capacitance value with the other parameters of the RCD snubber. For example, increasing the capacitance will result in a higher power dissipation. So you will need to size up your resistor's power dissipation rating as well. Then if you're seeing too much ringing 
across the MOSFET, then it is likely that the LC circuit is in a condition that is referred to as under damp. To fix this problem, you need to start by increasing the resistance of your RCD snubber. It is important though to be aware that by increasing the snubber's resistance value, you may limit its ability to reduce that peak voltage spike. So you might have to adjust some other components as well to account for that. Ultimately, you want to get your ringing to a state that is known as critically damped, which is where the ringing is minimized. Notice in this simulation how both the ringing and the peak voltage have both been significantly reduced compared to without an RCD snubber. And those are just a couple of the ways that you might need to manipulate your circuit after you do the design calculations in order to get it to where you want it. Now, I want to provide you a little more analysis and commentary on the behavior of the RCD snubber. That way you can have like a deeper understanding of what's going on. So one of the relationships I want you to be aware of is the relationship between the output power rating of our flyback converter and the required power rating of the RCD snubber. One thing you may have noticed in the power dissipation rating equation for our resistor, for our snubber resistor, is that as the power rating of the flyback converter goes up, so does the power dissipation of the RCD snubber. If it's not super clear to you how this relationship worked, I'll just show you how we got there. So, so the first relationship is that as our output power for our flyback converter goes up, the primary side peak current has to go up. And as the primary side peak current goes up, the snubber's resistance value decreases. And as the snubber's resistance value decreases, the amount of power it dissipates increases. So there is an indirect relationship between the output power rating of the flyback converter and the power dissipation rating of the flyback RCD snubber. This is one reason why you don't really see too many flyback converters that are designed to handle over 100 watts of output power is because anything past that in your RCD snubber starts to get significantly large and it also starts to have a significant impact on the efficiency of your power supply. The next relationship I want to point out to you is, is the relationship between the switching frequency and the power dissipation of the snubber. So similar to the relationship between the output power and the power rating of the snubber, as our switching frequency goes up, the power dissipation of our snubber also goes up. This is similarly due to the fact that as the switching frequency of the converter increases, the resistance of the RCD snubber decreases. And as we just talked about, as the resistance of the RCD snubber decreases, its power dissipation increases. And then lastly, the relationship between the snubber's capacitance value and its power dissipation. As we mentioned earlier, if you need to reduce the peak voltage spike that we are seeing, then the way you do that is to increase is to increase the snubber's capacitance value. Doing this will also result in a lower resistance value for the RCD snubber. And as we've just been talking about, lowering that RCD resistance will increase its power dissipation. So I hope this video about flyback RCD snubbers was helpful to you. There are actually multiple other areas in power electronics where snubbers are used, and we will touch more on those in separate videos. Those snubbers are more designed specifically for EMI purposes, but the methodologies and concepts are also pretty similar. And that is pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. Thank you very much if you made it to the end, and hopefully I will see you in the next one.